All right, welcome back, ENG 460. What we're going to do today is some um, tutorials or videos on how to design um, a MIPS processor using VHDL. Now, in class, we've looked at this slide right here. Well, this is a MIPS processor, a, a basic MIPS processor. It doesn't use pipelining, and uh, there's a couple of errors in here, but we just haven't got far enough in the course to talk about how to fix them. But at the you know basic low level, this is kind of what a processor looks like. You have your instruction memory right here. Okay? Then um, you know, that's where your code goes. Uh, you know, the, the programs you write goes in your instruction memory. And then you've got your register file here. Well, your register file is all those A0s and B0s and B1s and B2s and T0s through T8 and S0s through S7 and global pointer, frame pointer, return address, all your registers, 32 registers. Then you've got an ALU here that can add, subtract, shift left, shift right, uh, set less than, branch equal, or do all kinds of things. And then, of course, you've got your data memory. Well, you know, when we set up that data segment, we're writing out the data memory. And uh, the data segment begins at, what, 1001 quad zero. And then the uh, global pointer, which is also data memory, goes from 1000 to uh, 8000. Okay. And then, um, you know, we have some control. This tells the ALU what to do. We have a controller, which kind of sends out control signals to all these modules. And then we've got a whole bunch of messy logic up top. Well, that has to do with updating the program counter. This is the program counter. Normally, that's going to be at 0040 quad zero. And then if we um, don't have any branches or jumps, we're going to come back and just pop it up by 4. And that's what this module does. Now, I'm going to implement this in VHDL. So it's going to take several videos. And um, I'm going to imp implement the uh, simplest component I can see. And then I'll inc incrementally add more and more detail. But if I look at this diagram, the simplest thing on here is a multiplexer. There's a MUX. There's a MUX, there's two MUXs right there, and there's another MUX. So how many MUXs do we have? We have one, two, three, four, and five. These two up here are 32-bit input, 32-bit output. This one down here is a 32-bit input, 32-bit output. This one right here is 32 in, 32 out. But this one over here is 5-bit input and 5-bit output. So I want to create a VHDL component that can be used for both. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's create our MUX. So let's go ahead and start this. Let's, uh, we've got ISC Project Navigator. I'm going to do a new project. And I am going to call this guy MIPS. How about demo? MIPS demo. Oops, how about a zero? MIPS demo. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. And we'll default to the Spartan 3E and the XCS500E and parallel. We're just going to simulate it. We're not going to put it in hardware, actually. And then um, I'll finish. Okay, so I've created my MIPS demo project, and every video will add more and more stuff to it. So right now, there's nothing in the project. It's empty. Well, let's add a new source, and let's create the top-level processor, MIPS, VHDL module. I think, uh, let's see, this guy should probably have a clock and maybe a reset. How about a clock and a reset, both inputs? Yeah, let's do that. Clock and a reset both inputs. Okay. Now again, let me uh, get rid of all the um, comment statements so we can just focus on the VHDL code. Okay. And there you go. Okay. There is a VHDL file at its barest. Um, there's your library. There's your entity. I'm going to have a clock and a reset coming in. Here's my architecture block. We'll add stuff to this as we go along. But in looking at that picture, Let's go back and put the picture up here. That file represents this entire system. And I'm going to add stuff to that as I go along. First thing I'm going to create is my MUX. Okay? And i got five of them in here. So I'll just create one VHDL component, and we'll make five instantiations of it. So let's go along here, select our project, and do Project New Source, VHDL Module, and MUX. All right, so we'll do a MUX. And I'll fill this in by hand. Finish, okay. and here is my MUX VHDL file. All right. So let's uh, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Now we have to set up the entity. Well, what's going on in a two-to-one MUX? You have two inputs, you have a control input, and you have an output. All right. So I've already got this written, so I'm just going to kind of copy and paste. So inside the entity block, we need to define what goes in, what comes out. And there's my port statement. So what you've got is a MUX N0, MUX N1, a control input, and a output. 
The MUX inputs are n bits, okay, n minus 1 down to 0. The control is a single bit, standard logic, okay, single bit, standard logic. And um, since it's a single bit, it's a 2 to 1 MUX. Right, so we'll put a little comment up here. 2 to 1 MUX, that's all we need. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> the, the issue here is that I want to be able to instantiate a 5-bit input output as well as a 32-bit input output. Because I'm going to need that 5-bit MUX for my distinguish between my target and my destination register coming into the register file uh, to just when I distinguish between R and I type instructions. And then um, all those other MUXs are 32 bits. They're passing address and data. Okay. So what we can do to uh, be able to create two different types of MUXs, two different inputs, is I can use the generic. Okay. And if you remember what the generic looked like, it was something like this. Again, it goes inside your entity block. Okay. And it says n is a generic, it's a type integer, and it has a default value of 32, which means that my MUX input defaults to 31 down to 0, which is 32 bits. The other input is also 32 bits. The MUX control is 1 bit, which means I can switch between two inputs, and the output is n bits also. And we default to 32. All right, so we've got our entity. The next thing is to go hook up the architecture. Well, a MUX is really easy to implement. You don't even need a component, but we'll make a component. Okay. And there it is, right there. Okay. We are using a conditional signal assignment statement, and we're saying mux out takes on the value of mux in zero when can mux control is equal to zero. Otherwise, it takes on the value of mux in one. Okay. So there's two possible inputs, and mux control tells me what goes to the output. All right, let's go ahead and save everything. Let's select our mux. Come down to here, and what we'll do, we've got our MUX here. We're going to go into simulation. I'm going to do all this in simulation. So there's my MUX. I will behavior check syntax. Okay. Make this is bigger here. It's checking things for me, and it says, okay, your MUX looks pretty good. Okay. Now, anytime you do a component, you need to do a test bench, right? All right, let's do a test bench. Actually, I'm going to stop right here. I'll do a test bench next time. Stay tuned for more videos.